Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Wanted in 25 states. Not wanted in 25 states. It's time to take an inside look at those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Hey, Thrive Loud listeners, Lou Diamond here. Hope you're doing spectacular. Before we get to a special episode pulled from Bedside Readings, authors that thrive, wanted to catch up with you and let you know about some of the episodes we've had the last few weeks. Go back and check out from episode 664, Jenna Axelrod, we did a Thrive Loud catch-up episode featuring uh, her new movie, Absurdity of Certainty, and that she's got an absurdity movement. I know that whole thing sounds absurd, but you should go back and listen. It's a really fun conversation, really interesting topic, and she's a pretty awesome person. We also have Ryan Richards, one of my uh, good buddies who uh, is helping to rebrand and remessage Aimcast, uh, the company you've probably heard on this program several times. We've had founder Steve Rimland on, and how they're growing people and companies. So it'd be pretty cool to hear some of the work he's done in the past and what he's doing to help get this company uh, better positioned for the future. We also had our 666 episode with Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and we kind of dug into what's the meaning behind the devil, Lucifer, what those names really mean as she's a nymologist and really know, helps you understand what those the, the, the meaning behind the names, which is kind of cool, and the number in that particular instance. We also had Bill Humbert, the recruiter guy, Rob Ferrey, spectacular entertainment guy from Utah. And uh, here we are today now with our special guest, Dorinda Jones, an amazing author who has her new book, A Bad Day for Sunshine. See, we caught you up on all those episodes that you have to go back and hear. It's kind of like going back into your must-watch list on Netflix or Amazon Prime. I just told you what you need to be listening to because you're listening to this. So sit back and relax and listen to this special episode pulled from Bedside Readings, Authors That Thrive, where I get a chance to sit down and talk to Dorinda Jones. Welcome to Bedside Readings, Authors That Thrive, a podcast show that provides you exclusive access to top writers around the globe and how they are thriving through their writing, their passions, and their lives. Here's your host, Lou Diamond. Welcome everyone to Bedside Readings, Authors That Thrive connecting you to amazing authors that are thriving through their work and in their lives each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. I bring you Dorinda Jones. Dorinda, welcome to Authors That Thrive. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you for so much for having me. <laughs> I am so excited to have you day here, here today because because it's weird because we have to flip things around here because we're going to start off a bad day for sunshine and then we're going to spit it into a, a, a good day for something else. So I love authors. I love best-selling authors. I am fascinated by this. You have been writing for quite some time, but not every one of our listeners know you. Uh, can I do a little rewind of this, Dorinda? Just some basic questions to see how we got to this point. So, so have you always wanted to be a writer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I started making up stories before I could write. I was about five years old. Uh, and I would pretend like I was writing them. I would write them in my little notebook with a pencil and you know obviously I couldn't write yet <laughs> I was not a I was not a child prodigy or anything <laughs> and yeah I just I wrote short story I wrote anything and everything I could I would write um poems song lyrics news articles I just wrote constantly um and then when I was in high school um my best friend liked to write as well and we would go every day to uh tasty freeze <laughs> and take up a corner booth for hours. They hated us because we'd buy like one, you know, one drink. And, and we just sit there and write for hours. And I started my first manuscript and didn't finish it, but it was basically um, Escape from New York meets Van Halen because I was okay. a I, <laughs> I Van like Halen it. fan. 
<laughs> and my, it, I remember in high school, my, my best friend telling me, you know, cause we're trying to figure out, you know, you're trying to figure out your life, you know, figure out what you're going to do with your life. And, and she kept telling me, you should just be a writer. And I said, well, I can't be a writer. Not really, because I'm not an alcoholic and I'm not a genius. And I thought you had to be both of those <laughs> to be a writer. And sadly, I was quite serious about that. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I graduated high school, got married, did, did the usual stuff, had kids, went to college. Um, and then when I graduated college, I just, the bug hit me again and I started writing seriously. So <laughs> I'd say the writing bug hit Dorinda Jones pretty hard because she's been a New York Times and USA Today best-selling author for numerous books. She's won numerous awards, including the prestigious Vivian Arita, A Golden Heart, and a Daphne du Maurier, along the many other awards. Her books have been translated into 17 different languages. Let's get back to our conversation. Dorinda, writing and writing seriously are two different things. Um, I, I think our listeners always love to understand from the authors that we've had on this program, what kicks things off for them? What for you is like, oh, I've got an idea and let me just go down this path. Because when you're, when you're writing fictional stories or are they based on reality, it's, it's interesting to see what real, you know, what is it, art imitating reality, reality imitating art. What kicks things off for Dorinda? Well, you know, it's so funny because what happened, I kept thinking, well, I wanted to be a writer. You know, I finally got that in my head. I could, I could do this. I know I could do this. But what sparked that was I read an interview with a, an author, and I can't remember who it was. I feel really bad. But they said, if you write one page a day, at the end of the year, you'll have a complete novel. And for some reason, I don't know why, it took this monumental task and just made it seem like something I could do. And mm. that's what did it for me. That was the light bulb that went off in my head. And my first manuscript was actually a historical romance, which I do not write in, <laughs> but I read a bunch of. <laughs> and, and yeah, that's, that's where it all started. <laughs> Dorinda, you've covered a range of topics throughout your career and, and through your writing. So, so maybe help the listeners understand a little bit about, okay, this is the path I'm going to go down. What, what, what has that been? Because obviously throughout your life, your path has changed. So understanding exactly, I guess, maybe what inspires the ideas that you come up with? Um, that is such a good question because it's everything. Everything, I, I have a new idea every other day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those and I, it's the shiny new thing, you know, so you have a deadline and you're working toward that deadline, but oh no, here's the shiny new thing over here. <laughs> so ideas are not a problem for me. I have many. Um, I do admit that when I first wrote, so my very first book that sold was actually called First Grave on the Right. Um, it's about a female Grim Reaper who was a private investigator. <laughs> And that series did really well for me. I mean, it just took off and, and, and that's how I'm able to, you know, continue writing. And uh, for that one though, I just kind of, I really sat back and thought about what I wanted to write and what I felt like I wanted to read. And so, and you know hmm. what I mean? And <clears throat> I feel like that's so important for authors to write what you want to read and write what you love, not write what you know necessarily, because you can learn. But just, you know, we just write what you love. So Dorinda, the writing process. The, I, I've written books, but most of my books are based on like business and tactics for how you could actually, you know, improve on how you could better connect and thrive or even podcasting in some cases. But so they're very grounded in a practice and almost like a teaching. Um, and my style of writing is really let's get those ideas on the paper. Do you have a specific regimen that you love to follow or is it as the pages hit you in that calendar of you that you shared with the listeners before? I would love to say that I'm extremely disciplined and I write so many words a day and, you know, <laughs> and I, they, the words just flow out of me like magic and that does not happen for me. <laughs> um, basically, what I've had to do is I, I, I write with a friend every day. And hmm. this helps keep me disciplined because she's super disciplined and she's, you know, basically offered to do this for me. And 
Um, so we get up, we, we write, we do three one hour sprints in the mornings and wow. that just keeps me and she'll get 3000 words. Like, like it's nothing <laughs> mine. I I'm, I'm a huge plotter. She's a pantser. So she writes by the seat of her pants, as people say, <laughs> uh, I'm a plotter. I plot every moment of my books. And, um, so I don't know, it just doesn't come as easily for me as it does her. And she just like it for, I feel like for her, it is magic for me. It's no, it's more like pulling teeth, <laughs> but I can pretty much get three to 5,000 words a day. It may take me all day, but I can get there usually. Is it competitive with writing with your friends? I mean, does it become that way or it's just the social way to get you guys rolling? It, you know, I feel like she's a little more competitive than I am. <laughs> She's competitive with herself. She really wants to get the thousand words in one hour. You know, it's just and when she doesn't, she's really down on herself. Well, I'm like, dude, I got 300. You're doing great. Um, but it, it just is more, it's just a way to keep me on task because I have serious ADHD. And so, and she does it. What's really interesting is, it's just the way our brains work so differently she doesn't understand why I have to outline like I do. And I don't understand how she can just sit down and just start writing a book. Like it's nothing like it just, she just starts mm. writing. And I'm like, how do you even do that? It just amazes me. <laughs> Dur Dorinda, the typical timeline for your books, what does that look like from beginning to end? It, if I'm really on task, it, um, I will outline a book in about two, two weeks, two to four weeks, but usually two weeks. Um, and then I can write it in usually a month, one to two months. Oh, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty on, on point. I like that. So you've been recognized as a New York Times bestseller. Yeah, you, you've obviously been cranking them out more often than not. I, I want to talk about A Bad Day for Sunshine, which is one of those. Uh, give, give a little preview about what that book is about to our listeners so they understand the high level. Sure. It's about a female sheriff in a small town um, in New Mexico, and it's a small tourist town. I pitched it as the Gilmore Girls meets Fargo. So it, <laughs> it's this single mom who is a sheriff and her daughter, and um, she got dragged back to her, her hometown because her parents basically put her in the running for sheriff without her knowledge. <laughs> so um, she gets elected and yeah. And so the, her first day on the job, a teenage girl goes missing and um, it is, it, I don't, I guess you could say that they're humorous. It's comedy, um, but also there's mystery and there's some sexiness, lots of sexiness. She, she, you know, meets her old crush and is still just as in love as ever. And mm. <laughs> I like it. So, so are any of your heroines, I guess it wouldn't be heroin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, are there any situations where the leads of your book are not women? Um, let me think about this. Well, actually, so in my Charlie Davidson series, I, I have done spinoffs of those of like novellas where mm -hmm. the, the male from the series, whoever the, the male is, and, and one of them is called uh, Brighter Than the Sun, and it's my hero in the books. So yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I was going to say yeah, no, so but yeah, it, I have. <laughs> Well, a little bit of spin-off type right. thing, taking a character from one and then going down another avenue. I like that. Yes, That's pretty cool. You. I love asking guests that come on the program this question. I'm curious, Dorinda, to see where this goes. Obviously, you probably have those days where, you know, you're, as you just said, you know, the words just keep flowing and they, you know, everything hits the paper. But we also have those days where <laughs> you can't even come up with an idea. And that's not just in writing. That's just in life, right. the things that we yes. do. Dorinda... Mm -hmm. On most days you're you're thriving, but on those days when you're a little off your game, what practice do you seek or what individual do you seek out to get yourself back on the thriving track? I feel like if I'm really and truly stuck, I feel like I've taken the book in a wrong direction. And even in my outlines, sometimes I have to go back and rework my outlines. So I'll go back and I'll just picture it all in my head like a movie, you know, and I'll be like, what am I doing wrong here? If I still can't figure it out, um, I will bounce ideas off my writing partner or off other friends or my sister um, is my assistant and I'll throw things at her <laughs> and she'll have no clue what I'm talking about, but it's okay. Just somebody to bounce ideas off of. Um, 
And a lot of times I just get up and go for a walk and just think about it. A little bit of movement. I like that. Yeah. Get, get, gets the wheels greased a little bit. Let's do this. Um, Actually, let's do something before we do the admin part of the show. Um, Not only do you have a bad day for sunshine, but you have another book, A Good Day for Chardonnay. (laughs) Love it, by (laughs) the way. Can you give a little preview about what that one's about? So it's the continuing story of our heroine, Sunshine Vikram, and um, in her antics in the small town. And uh, in this one, a cold case. So she was a detective in Santa Fe for a while and a cold case come back, comes back to haunt her and she ends up um, searching for a missing boy that she never found. So, I just want to know when the wine's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's lots of wine. <laughs> well, and the third book is called A Hard Day for a Hangover. So yes, in the second one, they had way too much wine. They're reaping the, the benefits of it in the third book. <laughs> I love it. Dorinda, let's do the admin part of the show. Can you share with the listeners all the places people can find you, any of your books? Well, obviously, let's feature A Bad Day for Sunshine and A Good Day, good day for Chardonnay. We'll put it all in the show notes, but once you tell people where to go, it always gets more Thank engagement. You. Um, yeah, just go to my website, which is just Dorinda.com or DorindaJones.com, either one. Um, and I'm pretty much everywhere. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, just everywhere. <laughs> Were you born Dorinda? D A R Y N D A? I was, and I get asked that a lot. That is my real name. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm just jealous because you got the Dorinda.com, and obviously right. there were no other Dorindas lining exactly. up. So you, it's worked out so yeah. well for me. <laughs> I will say this: you have the uniquest first name and a very common last name, <laughs> so it does have a nice blend yes, to it, right? Very true. <laughs> Okay, we're going to do something that we do here on um, both Thrive Loud and Authors That Thrive. I think you're going to like it. We call it Fun Street. And Dorinda, we've been having fun so far. You're exciting to talk to. Yeah. Your, your books just keep flying off the shelves, and we want to keep people to understand a little more about you. So the way we do this is we try to dig a little deeper, pull the curtain back. So if you could, could you share with the listeners maybe an all-time favorite movie or one that you love to rewatch that's, you know, in your lineup of movies that are like your favorites? You know, I do rewatch a lot. I'm one of those people who I like the comfort of knowing the ending, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> right. I, but then I hate spoilers. So I, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But, you know, one that I absolutely love is Aliens, the second in the Alien trilogy. Really? I do. I love that movie. I love it. Okay, so by the way, I had in the back of my head that I thought you were going to say like Finding Forrester because the whole writing buddy, you have a writing right. buddy that you write with and the two of them are always like typing and writing in, in right. the room. So I thought maybe that was going to be think. one. Maybe You'd not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to do the speed round and I am so curious to see where this goes. This should be entertaining. Here's what I want you to do, Dorinda. I'm going to ask you something and I want the first thing that comes to your okay. mind. These are things that lift you up, make you feel good, motivate you. In some cases, they make you thrive. All right. You ready? Okay. A song of late that you love to hear and listen to, or one maybe that pumps you up. Um, My newest favorite is called Levitating, and I don't even know who it's by. I'm sorry. (laughs) It's by Dua Lipa. Yes, yes, that's it. Oh, come on now. Even, you know, even I'm not even that hip and that pop, but I knew that one. Yeah. Levitating is a good song. A favorite food that's not a dessert. Um, anything Mexican, enchiladas. A favorite dessert? Uh, cheesecake. An activity you wish you did more of? A walk. <laughs> A walk, okay, yeah. that's good. An activity you wish you did less of? Um, probably rewatch television series. I'm, I'm addicted. <laughs> <laughs> which, which series of later you're rewatching it? What's, the, what's in the right queue? Right now I am rewatching Elementary, which is my all-time favorite television series <laughs> interesting you know and that does what you have the investigative uh uh sherlock yes. holmes modern day type yes. thing right it's the, the modern I day love it. Holmes and, and the Watson. comedy in it is just pristine i love it <laughs> if i could snap my fingers dorinda jones and you could be anywhere in the world where are you i am probably in scotland and w- any what part have you been I there i've been there i've been to edinburgh and i just oh my gosh and i've been to the highlands, I guess some call them the, the lower highlands. I've yeah. been super high, but oh my God, my heart just, I left my heart there. It's just such a, it's so magical. Last thing here before we sign off. And Dorinda, when you're, let's speak to your reader 
and the listener here that's plugging in here. What's your goal in mind for them when you produce a book? Are you always you're always thinking about what you'd be reading, but over the years you've written many different books and you know, you have a following. So what do you, would you love to say to your readers right now that you have a chance to do so? Oh, I just if you do read and love my books, I mean my goal is to entertain and to make people laugh. And that is just that's every day that's my goal to set out to make people laugh and just forget about all the little things, the bills and the dishes and all of that, and just to, you know, make you laugh and fall in love. Dorinda Jones, truly a pleasure to have you on the program today. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.